In this video, we're going to talk about pH. pH is a way to measure the acidity or basicity of a solution. pH is a scale that goes from 0 to 14. If a solution has a pH of below 7, then we could say that it's acidic. If a solution has a pH that's above 7, then we could say that it's basic. Here are some common household items uh, that you could see according to their pH. Lemon juice, orange juice, tomato juice all have an acidic quality to them. Lemon juice and orange juice especially have citric acid. And you can see a lot of different cleaning supplies like bleach, soapy water, and ammonia are going to have a higher pH and so they're basic. Now pH is a way that measures the hydronium concentration of a solution. And this is the ion that I'm talking about. This is H3O+. Whenever you see square brackets around a compound, the square brackets mean the concentration of. So this reads concentration of hydronium. Now this is going to be the exact same thing as the concentration of hydrogen ions. So we'll kind of use them interchangeably. This is the one that we like to use a little more often. Now to really understand this, we have to talk about the auto-ionization of water. And this is what the auto-ionization of water looks like. Water in 100% pure water is going to actually have molecules of water reacting with itself. And we will have one water molecule actually give a proton, an H plus ion, over to another uh, water molecule. And so this first water molecule right here is actually going to lose one of those hydrogens in the form of H plus and it's going to become over here hydroxide. The other water molecule, since it gained an extra hydrogen, is going to become hydronium over here. Now in 100% pure water, the concentration of hydronium is going to be exactly equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. That's a really, really tiny amount. Now the pH of 100% pure water is going to be 7. And so it's neutral, which means the hydroxide concentration, this thing right here, this is what makes something basic. Since it would be neutral, this would have to be equal to the hydronium concentration. This right here is what makes something acidic. And so the concentration of hydroxide would also be 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. Again, these are really small numbers. If I wrote this in decimal form, it would look like this. That's decimal and then six zeros and a one. Really, really tiny. Now numbers this small are a little bit annoying to work with, so scientists came up with a better system. It's called pH. And pH is actually based off of the concentration of hydronium, or in other words, the concentration of H+. These are both going to be the same thing. And so pH is calculated by taking the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions, or in other words, hydronium ions. Don't forget those are the same. When we take the pH of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, you can try this on your calculator, take the negative log of that concentration, we end up with a pH of exactly 7. And so this is a neutral solution because a pH of 7 would fall right into the middle of the pH scale. Now here's something you're going to want to remember, is that as the number, the pH number, gets smaller, the solution is going to become more and more acidic, which means there's going to be a lot more of these hydrogen ions in the solution. It sounds weird because you'd think smaller numbers would mean less, but we're really saying smaller numbers mean more. And here's why. If the pH of a solution is equal to 2, that means we have a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 2 molar. In other words, that's 0 0.01 molar. Now, if the pH is 8, and this would refer to a basic solution, it wouldn't actually be acidic at all, the hydrogen ion concentration would be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 8 molar. Or in other words, 0 0.00000001 molar. So you can see as the pH gets smaller, the concentration of hydrogen ions actually gets bigger. Okay, so if we have a pH, then could we have a pOH? Well, we can. Remember that pH is based off of the hydrogen ion concentration, or in other words, hydronium, but we also have a hydroxide ion concentration. And so pOH 
is going to be the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Now for this solution of pure water, if we take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, we're going to find that the pOH is going to be equal to 7. It's the same as the pH in this situation. Now here's the really interesting thing, is that when we add the pH of a solution to the pOH of the exact same solution, we are always going to get an answer of 14 every single time. So that means if the pH were to go down, for example, if I had a pH uh, of a solution that was equal to 2, then that means the pOH would have to be equal to 12 because they have to be added together and equal 14. So if the pH is going to go down, that means the pOH has to go up. They have to always be equal to 14. And so this turns out to be something that's a constant. Okay, one last thing. Since the pH and pOH, when we compare them, they make a constant, we should be able to compare the hydronium ion or hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration. They should also make a constant, and they do. At any point, we can look at a solution and we can measure the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. If we multiply those two numbers together, we're always going to get the same answer. And it's right here. You can try it with the numbers from this pure solution. Right here, 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Let's multiply those together. If you try doing this on your calculator, you're going to find that you get an answer of 1 times 10 to the negative 14. It's another constant. This one we actually give a name. It's called the ion product constant of water. And we use the symbol K with a low, uh, subscript W to indicate this is for pure water. Okay, let's recap. We've actually learned four different equations and here they are. These equations look like just four different equations, but when we solve problems involving pH, we're actually going to use all of them together. Sometimes we need one, but sometimes we're going to use more than one to solve a problem. So let's look at an example and see how this would work. This question says, what is the pH of a solution that has a hydroxide concentration of 3.5 times 10 to the negative 6? Okay, let's look back at the equations we have and see which one we're going to use. We're actually going to need to use two of them in this problem. We're given the hydroxide ion concentration, but we want to find the pH. You can see that pH takes the negative log of the hyd hydrogen ion concentration. So we can't directly use this equation right here. I'm going to start here with this equation. This also has pH in it. pH plus pOH is always going to be equal to 14. Now I don't know the pOH, but I do know the hydroxide ion concentration. So what I could do is I could use this equation to solve for pOH and then use this equation to solve for pH. Let's do that. And we find that the pOH of this solution is going to be equal to 5.5. Now I can use the other equation. So pH plus pOH is always equal to 14. So I can solve for pH by just taking 14 minus the pOH, which I just found. And I get a pH of 8.5. And there's my final answer. And that's pH.